Good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'll be talking a bit about, well, as you can see, making people laugh fast. It's a specific case study at KU Leuven. So uh, KU Leuven is the university where I'm at, and we're specifically looking at um, how we look at open source and do things. So first of all, who am I? Uh, my name is Bert van der Poel. I'm 27 years old. I'm uh, a student at KU Leuven. Uh, in the advanced master's program uh, for advanced linguistics. So I'm not really technically from a computational background, but I do a lot of computational stuff with linguistics. Uh, my research is AGPL licensed. Uh, I got my university to agree to that, so I'm quite happy about it. Um, and I'll be specifically talking about Ulysses, which is a student organization of which I've been a member since 2012, and I've been president for uh, three years there. Good, so Ulysses. Ulysses stands for Unix Lovers Yield Student Services and Internet Support, because of course, in open source, we love our weird acronyms. Uh, and of course, they managed to find some. Uh, so we were founded in uh, 1994 uh, at our university. Um, we are quite interdisciplinary. It's quite important. Um, so we're not just strictly an IT group, of course, I'm in linguistics, so that makes sense, but we also have people from law or from social sciences. sciences. It kind of really depends. We have lots of new people coming in, and we try to really keep our group diverse. So we're not just uh, looking at people from engineering, but also other sciences, and we, we think that's really important. Um, so our official, we have two official goals, which is to uh, inform students and employees of our university about um, IT and support them, and uh, we want to bring IT and students specifically closer together. Since we have to be honest, students and IT, even though most people think, okay, but they grew up with all these devices, they're not really that comfortable with them, it's quite difficult, and especially if we're looking at open source, which can sometimes be a bit more difficult, um, it really brings a, a, a lot of uh, extra difficulty into the equation. Now, our mission, mission statement specifically says, okay, we have these goals, but in practice, we think that we should always use open source ideals, uh, that we should use uh, FOSS as much as possible, and that is really what we focus on. So then, uh, to give you an idea, so Leuven is, uh, the KU Leuven is the university where we're at. That is very close to Brussels. It's a very old university, the oldest one of the Low Countries. It's uh, over 600 years old, so it's, uh, it's been around for a bit, um, just so you have an idea. Um, so we're a typical Western European uh, university. KU Leuven is quite well known. And so, of course, we have lots of different degrees there. Uh, then specifically Ulysses. We were found in 1984, as I said uh, before, at the Faculty of Arts. That is quite weird, because you would expect us to be found at something to do with engineering or computer science or informatics or something like that. Uh, but actually, we were started by a linguist and an historian. Uh, the reason for that is quite clear when you know about our university a bit more. The KU Leuven in the beginning didn't really believe in the whole concept of, yeah, internet, that's for everyone. No, internet was was for professors, for senior researchers, or students that were specifically into that part of the sciences. And so uh, our uh, founders at the Faculty of Arts were, of course, not really getting a chance to look at this very interesting internet. And at that point, of course, in your student housing, you were going to have a modem or anything. You, were, you won't probably even have a phone. You would have to go to a phone booth. So. Of course, they really wanted this internet. And so they convinced the faculty, can we put up a server there? And they literally did that. So they put up a server there in a room of the faculty. Uh, they got their own uh, uh, location, which was, I think, ruby.arts.ku11.ac.be back in that day. Uh, and that was also what people used for email addresses. And uh, so it was already very interdisciplinary. So very early on, we had people from economics coming in from other degrees that were kind of left out and soon also of course the computer scientists joined and this uh, at first a bit of a political movement became very much a FOSS movement very early on because even though FOSS is not strictly in our name or anything um, of course you were going to do you, you were going to use Linux you were going to use FOSS tools to get on the internet and to do internet things at that time and now as well so to give you an idea, oh, these pictures look uh, kind of dim, but yeah, these are old scanned pictures uh, of our room. So you see there's literally people 
checking their email on the physical machine where their email would arrive, because that's the time we were at. So people couldn't like IMAP or pop three into the machine, because that wasn't a thing at that point. So literally people went physically to the server that received their email, and it was really an activity to go and check your email. Uh, so we're that kind of organization, and we really believed in, in giving people that chance. Um, and so, of course, this is a more uh, recent picture. Uh, this is uh, Tias, who's also part of the FOSDAM team. Um, and as you can see, our name has always been a bit problematic, so you've always had to point out to people what it actually means. Um, we're now at the point where we've just given up. So, Ulysses in 2012, that's when I joined. Um, we were primarily focused on hosting, because, of course, we started in the Faculty of Arts, we moved on to a location where we were uh, tied directly into the backbone of the university, so we have a very good connection, we're quite happy with that. And we had a bunch of servers, we offered some web hosting. Basically, a student uh, or student organization could get some experimental web hosting with lots of features and lots of interesting stuff for seven euros a year, which is basically nothing. And um, they have lots of freedom, because it's not just PHP, you can do uh, CGI of FCGI. Um, right now you have uh, GitLab support, but you, we used to do uh, SVN as well. And there's lots of other features, databases, that kind of stuff. So it's really quite interesting for someone who's getting into IT, but it's mostly an IT thing, as in students doing history, linguistics, uh, sociology, they're really, really not going to focus on that. And that was a bit of a pity. Um, we did about one workshop a year. That's very, like, not a lot. It's very infrequent. And uh, the, during this workshop, we had a tendency of really focusing too much on the ideology of FOSS. So if we did a workshop on Linux for beginners, we would spend 10 minutes about how ideologically great FOSS was. That didn't really resonate with the students because we were getting people from biology just curious about this Linux thing, looking at a Ubuntu or a Mint or something, and not really understanding why we were talking about freedom, because how does that enter into that? And you can't really explain that in 10 minutes, let's be honest. Like an hour is not even enough. Um, so we also did a few other things. We did some. Uh, we offered internet connection during a 24-hour relay race run that they do at the, our university, which is quite popular. Of course, it's a tiny thing, but we did that, and we did some registration during the student marathon. But we were mostly financially quite unsustainable at that point because we were trying to finance our hosting mostly with the money that we were getting from the hosting, but if you're only charging seven euros a year, you're not really going to pay for many disks, and disks do fail. So there was need for a resurgence, and that already happened when, was already happening when I joined, and during uh, my presidency and the presidency of, uh, the, uh, of Vincent, the person that came after me, we really pushed a few things. So we needed to do more, be more present. So what we did was we were going to do much more activity, um, and FOSS made much sense there. Why, if we did more workshops, wouldn't we do them on FOSS? If we were going to be more active, why not do more FOSS projects? Why not write more useful software to bring this IT closer to students, but make them FOSS, and be very conscious about that? Um, we were also in need of sponsors, because we weren't financially doing it. But we specifically decided, and this was not a very much a conscious decision, but it seemed just obvious to us that why wouldn't we look into just doing FOSS sponsors? And lots of people always claim that getting just typical FOSS sponsors, so I'm not even talking about a, a, a large Google or Microsoft, but I'm talking about the, the very classical, we make a, a, a piece of FOSS software and we sell support, that kind of FOSS companies. There's actually a ton of those around, and they're quite willing to sponsor you if you can offer something in return. And that in return can also, can also really just be that students know about them. Because FOSS companies have a problem with PR sometimes. They have a hard time getting out their message, especially because there's lots of FOSS startups in Belgium. It's really quite surprising. There are hundreds of them. Good. So we did some lo lots more workshops. We did them on command line, LaTeX, Git. And as you can see, we were getting FOSS sponsors. So Admire and ESIX both do FOSS stuff. Uh, Admire does lots of software. Uh, ESIX, they develop hardware with open source tools. And they write open source libraries to do this hardware design. 
So they're quite nice, and we got lots of other interesting sponsors. They changed throughout the years. Uh, but yeah, this was quite a success, and we got lots of people involved. This LaTeX workshop really went crazy up to the point where we do several a year now, and they're always fully booked. Um, so, and this way we really push this open technology towards students, which is a, a thing that we really think is important, because if we don't teach them Git, they'll be doing their projects in Dropbox or something and sharing them between them in the groups and they'll get conflicts and impossible situations. So these skills are so important and our university doesn't really teach all of these or like gives them idea like look into Git, but then that's about it sometimes. And, and this really was necessary and we think that we're really pushing it. Uh, at that point, and LaTeX especially, you can reach lots of non-tech people which is great. So then we got a very interesting opportunity. The 24-hour uh, the run that I discussed earlier needed a new counting system. And so we decided full on to go for complete false there. So we wrote a new counting system in, uh, that slices under a GPL. Um, no reason to not do it in Fossil, why wouldn't we? Uh, we found a library that's also perfectly compatible, so that was great. It's available on GitHub, it's a really nice system, and we did a talk on that last year during FOSDEM, so feel free to look at it, it's quite worth it. We also publish all our data, which is not only interesting because of, of course, we like open stuff, but also because you can prove, look, we take these results seriously, uh, you can find all the data online. So that's great, people can just verify the, the whole competition, and it's really fun. If you're, if you're ever at, in Leuven at that time, uh, and you would like to have a beer and look at a bunch of people going completely crazy over a, a quite a weird sports event, then, then that's really it. <laughs> okay, so you, you have an idea. This is our software. You can see they're using these patterns to, that we register in our system. It's RFID-based. If you're interested in the technical aspects, Get a, give a look at that talk. My slides will be available after this talk as well, so you can for sure have a look. You can also see how for our network we use this scheme that's completely created in Inkscape. So we take this uh, open source thing quite seriously and we try to use as many open source tools as we can. Um, then we decided, okay, we're getting people into open source now in their first and second bachelor. That's great. But uh, technical people, when they finish their master of computer science or, uh, or electrical engineering or something, industrial engineering, um, we want to convince them more. Not only to use Git, we want them to use lots of open source tools. So we do these advanced workshops that really go into open source stuff at a fundamental level. And the idea here is if we introduce them to really powerful tools that they can use and that they and get them interested, then that's quite worth it. Because if you do a talk like a modern LAMP or Linux from scratch or something, you're, you, you're really pushing this into two hours. So you're not seeing everything, but you're seeing enough for them to get inspired, to get curious, and they're free to email us, to contact us. So we get lots of people interested in open source, and that's what we think is important. Instead of saying, we are better because we're ideologically better, we tell them, look at all these great things about FOSS, and then the ideology comes automatically. Or at least that's my opinion, of course, and my experience, I'd say. So we practice what we preach. Uh, we try to use, use uh, LaTeX or uh, LibreOffice Impress for our presentations during workshops. We do not use Microsoft Office, of course, and we try not to use any sort of cloud-based closed system. Uh, we do try to do all our designs in Inkscape. For example, any poster that's designed by me will be in Inkscape for sure. Uh, and this presentation is done in Impress, for example. Um, all the cheat sheets, presentations, all kinds of files that we do for workshops or other uh, aspects of what we do are released under Creative Commons or some other open license. We try to really make things available uh, because every time people see this license, see this notice, see that we share something and we put like this weird license thing on there, they're reminded of the idea that we're trying to push them. We're really trying to every year, every few months tell them, okay, yeah, but there's this open source thing, you know, and, and not in an ideological way, but in a practical way, like this is available because that exists. That's a good thing, right? And of course, we put stuff on our FTP, we put custom installers there. For LaTeX, you have lots of problems with certain installers, so we make our own custom installer for them. And we tell them specifically, if they're curious about it, like, we can do this because it's open source, because we can do with, that, with it what we want. Uh, there used to be like a very tough download limit on, uh, 
on uh, university connections in like student housing. Uh, sadly, they've now stopped uh, the whole internet student housing thing, so I'm really sad about that. But, um, and uh, there our FTP was whitelisted, so we had lots of open source projects there and really telling people like, you can find open media, you can find distros, you can find software on our FTP, uh, have a look at that, that's quite worth it. And of course, we used to use uh, PIWIC for our uh, analytics, but decided to do no more tracking. We thought of that was more ethical. And of course, I mean, practice what you preach really is practice what you preach. So you shouldn't be using Google Analytics in the background while also saying, but we use Inkscape for design. You have to be consistent. But of course, we aren't perfect. And even, <laughs> even though we're saying like, we do all these open things, Sometimes we don't really go for the most open option. Facebook, Twitter, it's hard to ignore them. We are on Instagram. We do uh, market our, face, uh, our, our uh, workshops on Facebook because that's the easiest way to contact students. Okay, we do lots of other stuff. We hang posters. We, we um, have them displayed on displays in the, the different faculties. But still, posting in these Facebook groups seems to be a requirement. And we have to be practical about that. I don't think it's completely wrong to do that if it helps people to understand open source. In, in a sense, it's becoming a necessary evil, but luckily Facebook is got becoming less prominent, which I think is a good thing in this case. Um, so only designing with open tools is hard. People need to learn Inkscape because, of course, our new members also come from a background where in secondary school, in primary school, they've been taught Word, they've played with Photoshop, they've, maybe they've used Illustrator, but Inkscape, GIMP, that's new to them usually. So we have to teach them as well, and that, that can take some time. We should also release more software, but that's something that everyone in this room probably knows. You write lots of software and you think, ah, should I release this? It's kind of ugly code or it's messy or I'm not sure if it's appropriate and useful to everyone. And so you end up not releasing it. And we, we should really do that more, but that goes for everyone, I think. Um, the false message can sometimes get drowned out. Of course, if you're doing a workshop, you have so many questions, so many things, it's hard to get the message across, especially in LaTeX, that can be kind of difficult. But we do try. And of course, we should post more on our website, on our blog, about all the cool things we do. But that's, of course, the last thing you do, and you always have so many new cool things. So writing a blog post, it doesn't really happen that often. But uh, again, that's similar to the releasing. That's something that everyone has difficulties with. Then, of course, we go to FOSDEM every year. And instead of just saying, OK, we go to FOSDEM as a team, we open it up to students. And we tell them, since this year we even offer a discount, we'll get the tickets for you. We'll arrange everything. Come together with us to FOSDEM. You'll get an email, how it is, what it's like, what to expect. You get an example of what kind of schedule you'll create. Uh, you get an idea of, OK, their stance, what's that all about? Because let's be honest, if you don't really know this FOS community, if you got into FOS because you were on our LaTeX and our GitHub, uh, in, our, uh, in our Git um, uh, workshops, and you, you looked around a bit on GitHub, you used some, uh, some open tools during classes, then okay, you have an idea, but it's not like they hang around on IRC all day. That's, that's usually not the situation. And so this is really new to them. And, and so trying to ease them into the idea of FOSS is really um, a bit difficult, but quite worth it, because if they get to FOSS them, and they get FOSS them, then they start really loving FOSS. Because FOSDEM is really a gateway drug, let's be honest. If you, if you have a few interesting talks, you can really get into, wow, this was so interesting. And then you start looking around, searching on the internet, and finding all these interesting projects. And then it really escalates. Uh, and so that's really important to us. And it's, it's a tiny thing. We, we nearly have to do no effort to get it going. But still, it has a huge impact. Ah, there we go. Then we do a capture the flag hacking competition. Completely different. This is not really focused on the on the, the all the interdisciplinary part. This is specifically for computer science engineers, that kind of people. But there's also some people from physics and math uh, that that are joining. So it's really a security competition. They have to break into lots of interesting applications. Why would this be relevant for open source um, ideas? Well, because they need lots of tooling. And let's be honest. For security purposes, lots of these tools are FOSS only. You will do much better at our competition if you know about Binwalk, if you know about Nmap. But we're not hiding that. We're almost literally telling them, hey, these things exist, and Linux is quite worth it, and 
If you're good at Linux, you might do well here. And that's already creating this narrative. And where the, the idea is, we've done this now one time last year, that we're going to do this every year, and that people will start learning, will start learning to get good at, um, at security and also start getting into Linux and open source and all these tools. Um, and we really think that this could be our new thing to further create this whole open source narrative, but that's, this is very much still under development. We're also still looking for sponsors, so feel free to email us. <laughs> then we have uh, one last thing. That's really a big thing, and uh, I think one of the crowning jewels of my own presidency. We introduced an open source job fair. Let's be honest, student job fairs, they're usually about the big, big companies in IT. They're about the, the typical consultancy ones. We all are already thinking of some. I mean, in Belgium, there's probably some different ones than, than, than the ones in the US, but we know the kinds of companies that we're talking about. Those are not invited. They're not welcome. We're, we're quite rude about that. If they email us, they will get a polite but very direct message that they're not the kind of companies as well that are welcome there. And this is, has been really growing very much. If you look at the amount of logos, we are really going well. And we really believe that um, both supporting Belgian as well as, as, as European open source companies is important. And this really stems from the idea that um, one of our members got into, uh, started doing, uh, working at a very uh, big consultancy firm, and he was really unhappy there, and therefore he stayed hanging around in Ulysses, even though he wasn't a student anymore, uh, because he was kind of bored. And when he moved on to a nice, more open source-like company, he became an alumnus and really moved on. And there we really noticed that, okay, these companies, people are not finding them. And so we really thought, okay, this is, financially and ethically a good idea. Because if you're doing this kind of open source job fair, it's very unique. There's rarely any in the world, really, that, that are doing these. It's, it's very sad that not a lot of people are pushing these open source companies. You can get lots of interesting jobs to students that will otherwise do very boring IT that will be very closed. And this can really make the big impact. And this is really the crowning jewel on our trajectory. We go from a simple workshop through all these different activities. We get them interested into open source. We get them into open source. And then we consolidate in an open source job. And we think that we are really making a difference there. And we hope that we're creating a new generation of, of open source. So that's what we hope. So um, we have one this year, of course, as well. So feel free to contact us if you're from a company. Or if you want to come and looking for a new job or just curious, feel free to come by. It's in March. So if you're not in Belgium, then OK, that's tough luck. But uh, hey, have a look at our website. It's quite cool. Um, also, this poster is completely designed with open source tools again. So uh, we're quite serious about that. And uh, yeah, so a few small things. Um, they matter the most, the small things. Um, Always try and use open tools for anything that you do. Think about that. It's about the idea of constantly thinking, OK, open is open. Um, it, we contribute tiny patches to stuff. For example, we use Tech Studio during our workshops. We found some things that we, we thought could be more user friendly. We patched them. They accepted the patches easily. And so that is making our workshop for next year much better. So that's great. Uh, and release what you can. It's always difficult. We released recently a uh, media wiki extension for Shibboleth. It's only useful really for universities. But we decided, OK, maybe it's, it's not very useful for everyone, but we should release more. So conclusion, FOSS isn't just about ethics. We have to be practical. We have to get people interested and then explain them, OK, but freedom is also great. But you're already using these tools, so yeah, this freedom really enters into things. It's not just free as in gratis. Um, yeah, so we want to have them stay for freedom. Practice what you preach. Don't be a hypocrite, in a sense. Don't use Photoshop for your posters, but claim on the posters. But FOSS is so great. Look at this poster that we created with closed source software. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. And also try to be internally radical. Not too much, but a bit. Um, but externally pragmatic. So build a FOSS narrative, not just freedom, 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 no explanation. <laughs> That doesn't work. Good. So thank you for your attention. Feel free to contact me at my Ulysses email address. And of course, questions. We only have a few minutes. So. All right. Yeah, we have a few minutes. And before we get into that, I just wanted to give you this thank from you the very organizers. Much. You're very welcome. Um, yeah, so we will. Um, we have about five minutes for questions, I think. So just uh, raise your hand, and I'll pass around the mic here.
So I, I guess I have two questions. I, I really like what you're doing. I really like the presentation. Could you talk a bit about, and I think starting people using FOSS tools is a great way to start. Could you talk a bit about how you help them move from users to participants or contributors? And could you talk a bit, uh, you didn't, it's clear this is a student organization, which I think is great. You've said nothing about how faculty are involved in open source at all. Mm -hmm. And as a faculty member, I'm sort of curious about that too. Well, yeah. so are you, are you first? Oh, sorry. Yeah, right. So the, the first question is about okay, getting them from users to contributors. That's really difficult. And that's, that's, that's really the point where we're kind of hoping that education also helps. So of course, if, if you're a biologist or a sociologist, the chances are kind of small that you're going to contribute, because most of those people don't learn to code, really. Um, they, could, they could translate, or they could do design work. And we would really like to create that narrative, but it's really difficult, because we kind of lose them after the basic workshops because then it's difficult to really gra create a useful narrative for them for the computer scientists and the engineers and that kind of uh, that, that kind of group uh, but also for physics and math students it's more easy since they uh, uh, when they understand the concept of open source uh, from our workshops and especially in the advanced workshops, they start seeing opportunities during their master's degree usually. When they see that they're using lots of tools and where they're finding an irritation and then they think about, okay, but this is open source, I can use it for free, but that probably also means I can make a change. And that's when they start really looking into it and, and attempt to change and we would really, if they were to email us like I have this problem, could you maybe help me do the contribution? We would love that to happen, but we're not at that point yet. But we do think that people are understanding the concept of I am free to contribute more thanks to our workshops. But that's of course hard to measure because you can't really go and ask people after, after you did our workshop three years ago, have you, have you now started contributing to open source projects? That's a bit difficult. But yeah, that's where the big difficulty lies. And then your second question was? So, ah, the different faculties. Well, we have a, a good connection with uh, the Faculty of Computer Science, of course. Um, even though I'm not connected to the faculty, strictly speaking, I have lots of contact with them, mostly during my presidency I had. And they very much believe in our concept. They also supported uh, the things that we do. Also, the central IT service of the university supports us. But it's difficult to get them to really push our narrative. We have some professors who, for example, uh, openly say, you can go to these workshops. It's, it's useful. Do it. It's, it's interesting on top of my course. But getting them to really get involved, to, for example, give credits for our workshops or to actively promote them that's more difficult what we do get is we are free to put our um, graphics on lots of monitors that are popping popping up they're trying to move away from paper posters so they're hanging monitors everywhere and there we find it very easy to uh, create a, a, a lot of uh, buzz for our events so that's great but we are trying to get the university more aboard, but as you know, universities are a very hierarchical system, so it's always very difficult to get a decision through to an entire faculty or an entire university. But we're trying. We, ha we have some things, for example, we have an interesting project with the Faculty of Arts where they're trying to do digitalized bachelor papers. They're using our hosting accounts and trying to explain some basic stuff about FOSS when they're doing a Drupal or WordPress website. And so uh, they were quite happy. We have manuals for them and for other users. So we're trying to push people towards these open source CMS systems that, that does help a bit, but it's, it's not as much as we would like. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much.